Hello, everybody, and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to new releases in April. I know, I know, it's already the, I don't know, 11th or something. I'm awfully late and I'm awfully sorry. But, you know, reasons. <laughs> but April is still, you know, going on for at least another three weeks. So I thought, why not, even if it's almost two weeks late, why not do a new releases video? like I do every month, because I look at the new releases anyway. I just did a uh, day before yesterday, and I figured I might as well make a video. And as always, we start the new releases with general fiction. And in this category, I have two, because the first one I wanted to, <laughs> to include, but it's a bit of a cheat. Um, and that is Fiona Mosley's new book, Hot Stew. Uh, and why is it a cheat? Because it has been published in the UK in March, uh, but it will be published in the US on the 20th of April. So there you go. Anyway, Fiona Mosley was born in London. She grew up in New York uh, and now lives in the UK, I believe. Um, and I really, really liked her debut novel, which came out four years ago, um, Elmet, about a, a, a young girl, 12 years old, and her brother and the family living out in the wilderness, so to speak. I, I thought that was a really good book, and I was not the only one because it was long-listed, uh, and I think even short-listed for the, uh, the Booker Prize in 2017. So when I saw that um, uh, Mosley had a new book out, I was immediately interested. Um, this one is set in the present day in uh, Soho in London, and uh, the premise is uh, we have this billionaire uh, woman, uh, Agatha, who owns a building um, and she wants to tear the building down, get rid of the tenants and build luxury flats and a uh, uh, shopping mall, something like that. You know, gentrification. <laughs> we all know about that. Um, the building now at the moment um, has a, a very kind of old fashioned brothel and the sex workers uh, working there, uh, they will not let uh, Agatha take their building without a fight. That's the premise. I thought that sounded... Um, yeah, when I say uh, new, I don't mean gentrification is a new topic. Of course not. There are plenty of books dealing with gentrification. But I thought the idea, first of all, that you have um, a, a female uh, billionaire uh, real estate owner is something you don't read about that often. And the second thing that I thought was quite new uh, and a different, yeah, different vantage point into this kind of topic of gentrification is, of course, that it's about a brothel. Uh, you know, all kinds of, uh, uh, yeah, consequences about that, whether we think what we think about morally about uh, something like that. So I, I felt that was a new take on um, a subject, a topic that had been dealt with before. And again, it's Fiona Mosley. So I was interested and wanted to include it in the TBR, even though, like I said, the book had been published mid-March already in the UK. Okay, let's see here. Yes, the, the camera angle might have changed because I had to get up <laughs> and answer the doorbell and uh, talk to the neighbor for half an hour. So where was I? Um, category, what do we have? Yes, the second book. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. The second book in the category, General Fiction, is a book that I picked uh, because it's the debut novel of a well-known non-fiction author, and that is Call Baby by Morgan Jerkins, uh, which will come out, um, let me check, um, 6th of April, and that's not will come out, but has come out last Tuesday, 6th of April. Um, Morgan Jerkins, you, you probably all know, she's a black um, American writer, and like I said, she's very well known for her nonfiction uh, about um, race, about feminism. But this is her debut novel, and the premise is kind of sort of weird in a way, and I have no clue where she will be going with this. So the, the call in the title called Baby, uh, I'm sorry, uh, um, is the 
um, the, the membrane, the sac that uh, surrounds the fetus in the womb. And once in every blue moon, I don't know, 100,000 births or something, a baby will be born with that sac, with that membrane covering its body intact. Um, and the, the book centers around the call. Uh, because it's it's believed, at least that's what we are told in the book, that this call has uh, healing powers. So we have this family who deals in calls and makes a living out of that. Um, and we have one woman in particular who had a lot of miscarriages already and stillbirths, and then she buys a, a piece of call, but it doesn't help. Um, and at the same time, you have a baby born into the uh, the, the, the family that uh, sells calls and that is actually a call baby. It sounded complex, um, these characters, and I like I said, I have no idea um, where the author will be going with the plot. Uh, but I'm interested in, you know, the fact that uh, the, the author ventures, now ventures into fiction. Uh, I think she is an interesting thinker, um, and the premise is certainly something that intrigued me. So that's why I wanted to include um, Call Baby into the video for new releases for April. Next up is nonfiction, and this time it's just the other way around. It's a, a very well known fiction author, Edwidge Danticat, who wrote a memoir, um, Beginnings, Endings, and Salt. Um, uh, the book came out on the first day of April, April 1st. Yes, April 1st is the first day of April. <laughs> I think I just didn't get enough sleep uh, last night. But anyway, so this um, Edwidge Danticat, you probably know her, um, a, a author from Haiti. I, I love her work. Um, uh, she's one of the very few authors that uh, can insert some magic or magical realism into her books, and it still works for me. You know me. I, I'm, I, do, I don't like that. But with her, it... it it, it works. Uh, I think uh, she's a brilliant writer. And when I saw that this nonfiction book came out, I was immediately interested. Uh, so Beginnings, Endings and Salt is, um, I said, a memoir of sorts because it's not a, a linear uh, a story she tells, but she tells us her life in essays. Um, but we will learn um, her from her childhood in Haiti, her coming of age as a woman, as a writer. Uh, so it, it it has some chronology as far as I understood it, but it's divided into essays. So it's probably also topic oriented, but who cares? It's Edwidge Danticat um, and it's a, the story of her life. So of course, this had to go into the new releases for April. Next, we move on to the category translated fiction. And I picked a French book uh, for this one by Malice de Kerangal, Painting Time, translated from the French by Jessica Moore, which will be published on the 20th of April. And the French original uh, was published in um, mid-2018. Um, Malice de Kerangal was born in 1967. so she has quite some books under her belt, but I have to admit that I discovered her only a couple of years back uh, with uh, the translation of a book uh, in the English translation. It's called Men the Living, uh, which was nominated for the Men Booker International Prize, I think, in 2016. Um, it's about a heart transplant, the, the, uh, the person who gave the heart and the person who received the heart. And I thought it was it was really good, Qu quite different in a way. Um, so uh, she has more my, many more books than that one, but that's when I discovered her. Um, and the new book, uh, Painting Time, uh, follows a young painter, uh, a young female painter. Um, uh, I think if I remember correctly, her name was is Paula. Uh, yes, Paula Karst. Um, uh, and she goes to this this famous um, art school in Brussels, and we follow her exploring art and especially making a decision to um, put more effort and emphasis on craft than on the so-called high, you know, art um, expression. Um, I thought that was interesting. I, it, you know, painting a book about paintings or about a painter is one of my 
buzzwords that I'm immediately interested. If I ever do, do the tag about buzzwords, this will certainly come up because I just, I'm immediately like, oh yes, I want to read this. I have no idea why, but yeah, there you go. That's just the way it is. Anyway, so we follow Paula. Um, I, I don't know uh, what kind of plot ensues there. I don't, I didn't really do much um, delving into because I, I didn't want to. I, I was just intrigued by the premise um, of this young artist. And then she gets this big uh, commission uh, to uh, reproduce paintings, uh, cave paintings. Another buzzword, certainly for nonfiction. I, I love everything in nonfiction about those uh, uh, cave paintings. So these two buzzwords together, plus the fact that I read a previous book by this art author and really enjoyed, uh, made me want to include it uh, into the new releases video for April and share this book with you. And I hope you are as excited as I am. And as always, we end the new releases video with a sci-fi. And I am so excited because there is a new murder bot book. Calm down, breathe. Start from the beginning. So for the category sci-fi, we have Martha Wells uh, Fugitive Telemetry, which will come out uh, end of April, the 27th. Martha Wells is an author from Texas writing sci-fi, and I am just, uh, I love her uh, series, the Murderbot series. Uh, this one is number six in the so-called Murderbot Diaries. If you're not familiar with the Murderbot, um, it, the Murderbot is an android, uh, a self-aware android from the outside looking like a human being because human beings also in the future are enhanced with all kinds of things. So you can't really, from just looking um, at the android and a human being, distinguish. But it is not a human being, it's an android. And it's a so-called sec unit, a security unit, which means it provides security. It's hired by corporations to provide security. That sounds pretty straightforward, but the murder bot, that's what they call themselves. This this particular unit calls himself or themselves or herself uh, because um, the murder bot feels responsible uh, for the death of humans way back before the first book starts. That's why. Um, the personality is also it's cynical, um, self-doubting, doesn't really like to you know, be around humans, but on the other hand, maybe it does. It's just a personality to to die for. Um, I love the whole series. Um, and this one, like I said, is number six. And there was last year, um, um, uh, Martha Wells published a standalone. So if you want to uh, maybe don't start with the very first book um, uh, in the series, but just have a, a look. You might also uh, want to, you, you might uh, want to check out uh, the standalone. I will have a look what that was called. Let me just check because I forgot, because I'm stupid and ill-prepared. Um, Network Effect, yes, and that was published in 2020. Uh, but, I mean, if you want to have my advice, start with book number one and read the whole series. It's fabulous. This one, um, I don't know much about the plot because I'm going to read it anyway, but as usual, you have a crime. Um, a murder bot finds a dead human, and but it didn't kill that human, and then it has to investigate and talks, uh, talk to humans in order to find out what happened. Um, that's your typical premise for the, for the murder bot uh, series, and I'm reading those because of the character, because I, I think the character is so fantastic. Anyway, a new murder bot, um, Fugitive Telemetry, end of April. Mm -hmm. And this was it for the new releases that I picked uh, for April. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if there's a particular book coming out in April that you are um, uh, excited about. And uh or any other comment, uh, you know I'm looking forward to your comments, and I know I'm behind. I will catch up hopefully this weekend. Anyway, and I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.